what's up guys this is B08 and welcome to another video of gear of the beasts uh, today I'm gonna talk about my primary this was the first ever airsoft gun that I purchased uh, I don't even know how many years ago but quite a few uh, it started out its life as a VFC VR16 pretty much stock it had a 14 and a half inch barrel the standard not free-floating handguard, uh, crane stock, pistol grip. It was a pretty like fixed iron sights also. It was a pretty basic AEG. I played with it for for a year or two, and I reached a point where I thought that I needed a shorter platform. Okay, when you start playing a lot of CQB, longer barrels start getting annoying sometimes and and they slow you down because you're getting into confined spaces and everything and they really slow you down so uh, I was like I didn't want to be investing in a new gun and I really liked the performance of the one that I had so what I did was I called B06 from Bishter Soft team as well and I said dude can we can we chop the barrel on my on my AG uh, and he said yeah just bring me the barrel and and, and I'll, I'll I'll cut it and I'll, I'll thread it so that's what I did I took the barrel off I, I gave it to him and he cut it to mark 18 length which is about 10.2 10.3 inches and he threaded it uh, and that was the the turning point uh, to all the upgrades that I did. That was the first big uh, change that I did to the to the original setup. Uh, what is stock on this gun externally? We can start with the butt stock. This is the original crane stock, okay? I really like the crane stock because I like the cheek weld that it gives when I when I put my, my face against the against the stock. I really like the the angle at which my cheeks uh, meet the, the buttstock as well as giving me more than enough space for, for batteries and whatnot. Uh, moving to the pistol grip, it is the original pistol grip. I tried uh, many different pistol grips but I ended up always going back to this one. Uh, either the angle of engagement of the motor with the gears wasn't correct or, or something but I never liked how the uh, other grips performed so what I did was I got tired of it I installed the original one I removed the the finger groove and did a pretty basic stippling job my first ever as well so I mean I'm pretty happy with it it's it's comfortable for me and I keep the the original angle of the motor with the gearbox so it gives me the best performance um, now here I run uh, backup irons these are Maculembus uh, repros okay for red dot uh, this is a aimpoint compen 3 replica I don't know what brand it is but it works pretty pretty good on a Wilcox uh, mount replica as well. Uh, let me just say something. There's a lot of guys out there who are running their AGs without sights. Don't be that guy. Like this is really important. Most often, you will not see the trajectory of your BBs. Um, you need you need a, a red dot, and you need a red dot that you can trust. Something that you can place your dot somewhere and be sure that when you pull the trigger that's where your BB is gonna go like everybody has seen that guy at the field who's like lobbing the BBs in and he's not even looking and he's like oh I'm, I hit you or something no man that doesn't work for me I used to run the tactical universal clip it's basically uh, a rod a metal rod that bolts to your buffer tube and then you have uh, the other part on your vest and the, the weapon clips to it and it, it's really comfortable for when you're waiting, when you don't want to be carrying your, your gun on your hands. But I, I quickly found out that it wasn't the best option for me. I really like to climb stuff, uh, put my gun behind my back and do something. Uh, 
and I really felt the need for a sling. So that's why I have a sling swivel here for my Ferro Concept Slingster, which is, in my opinion, the best sling out there. Um, and now it's, it's all I run. It's all I run. The sling is more than enough for me. Uh, to keep on going, this is a replica Surefire M600 flashlight. It's not really, really bright. I don't even know how many lumens it, it puts out. But I mean, it's, it's enough for those situations where you're in the dark and you need to search a room or you're looking for something or even when you turn it on to just see the trace of your BBs it's more than enough for that um, next this is a replica pack box pack 15 uh, I have it on here mostly for looks also it has it has gotten swapped out for a for a run cam to to serve as a, as a zoom cam uh, you may you may see footage of that in the future. Uh, for grip, I have a Magpul MOE, if I'm not mistaken, uh, front grip. I don't I don't like to grip it like this. It's it's pretty much it serves as a as a backstop for my hand, and I grip it like this. And that's behind the it's behind the the pack box that I have the pressure pad for for my, my flashlight. Uh, to keep on going, uh, up front I have a flash hider suppressor combo. As, as many of you know already in Portugal, we have this law where 10 centimeters of the barrel have to be painted bright yellow. So what I did was I got this uh, 3D printed and I have a suppressor cover, whatever you want to call it, that just sits on top and it hides the, the yellow so that I don't get spotted on the field. To carry all this in the front, uh, I have a Mark 18 style handguard. It's, the story is quite funny, so when I, when I chopped the barrel, I had a, a longer uh, Nevesky style. Uh, rail and I had a friend who had a spec arms mark 18 So he wanted to make it longer and I wanted to make mine shorter So one time I was talking with him and we just decided let's swap rails So that's what we did. I kept his and he got mine. I'm pretty happy with it. It, it never gave me any problem It's it's rock solid on here. So Yeah, that's 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 the externals basically uh, now Talking about the internals, this gun is completely custom on the inside, okay? For those of you who just got a new gun and are looking to upgrade, you don't need to upgrade all at once, okay? This gun has been a project since the beginning. Since the first upgrade I did, uh, I kept upgrading it, but not all at, all at once, okay? So I would say the the main the main parts that you need to upgrade on any pretty much standard AEG are the inner barrel, which I have a Madbull stainless steel uh, 603 inner barrel. The hop up is the stock chamber, but I have a Prometheus uh, flat hop, both bucking and nub. There they come as a combo. On the gearbox, what I have is um, 13 to 1 gears, high, high speed gears by SHS. Uh, I also have by SHS a steel, steel tube piston. Uh, I have a Gate Titan MOSFET, which is a really, really, really nice addition. If you have an AEG, don't even mess around with those little MOSFETs that you put in the buffer tube. Go with this, okay? This improves trigger response by an insane amount, uh, you can program it, like you can do three round burst, full auto, you can do anything, like it's, it's, it's a really, really worth in investment, okay? Uh, 
What I also got to go with it was this flat face trigger, which I really like. It, it doesn't add to the performance of the gun or anything, but I really like the feel of the flat face on my finger when I shoot it. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, this gun is performing quite well. Uh, I'll put in some footage of it at it's around 50, 55, 60 yards or meters, uh, excuse me. And I can get like most most hits at that distance. Like I'll I'll throw one or two to the side, but it's pretty consistent. So this was the review of my AG, my VFC VR16 Mark 18 length. Uh, if you guys have any questions regarding this gun or any of my other kit, just leave a comment below. Uh, we will we will keep this series going on, Gear of the Beast, so y'all can see all of all of the team members' guns, gear, everything. Um, if you like to if you like to to see something really specific. Also, leave a comment below, we'll, we'll answer that. Um, don't forget, like, subscribe, all of that good stuff, that really helps us a lot. And stay tuned and have fun on the airsoft field. This was B08.